good evening everybody thank you all for your participation i am harshni from hdic's medtech incubator hosting the session introducing to you the speakers of the day dr adit chinaswami laparoscopic surgeon at madras institute of urology vijaya hospital and he is also the co-founder of medicine vr private limited and the second speaker for the day is mr pranav shrinivas co-founder of illuminify technologies before moving into the session i kindly request everybody to go on mute and turn on your mic only when you speak and since this is a platform for free flow talk and discussion anybody can raise questions and provide answers or suggestions hence by doing this let's keep it a free flow one and also as promised uh, we've got few interesting things that will be conducted after our speakers have sh shared their insights on the topics for the day so now i invite dr adit chinaswami to share his insights on the topic functioning of hospitals during the pandemic over to you sir uh thanks ashni hello everyone i think uh it's a very different uh, circumstances these are under which we are all getting together uh we have all been affected by this over the last uh, few months but uh, in particularly as being a health tech incubator i think we are uh, at the crux of this entire pandemic this our how we probably modify our solution to the current situation is going to make or break us and with that i'll probably dive right into what i'm going to talk about today i thought it would be useful for a lot of you to understand how the hospitals are currently handling the pandemics uh it is common knowledge now that most of the hospitals are overflowing with uh, covid cases their regular functioning has been disrupted so we have uh, the hospitals have generally been split into three main cadres one are the medical institutes and the colleges the second being the corporate setups or uh, high volume high cap uh, capacity hospitals which also have high capabilities of handling all kinds of cases the next are the smaller nursing homes or the unorganized sector which uh, clinics uh, nursing homes consultation centers and uh, single specialty hospitals which don't have icus or any uh, advanced uh, facilities so if we talk about the medical institutes and uh, the corporates they have been affected in terms of elective surgeries highly specifically and patient inflow so chennai as a medical hub we used to get a lot of patients from andhra in particular and also from you know southern places in and around neighboring cities and such but with all the borders being closed the patient flow has been restricted this has directly led to say all our hospitals having a reduced patient uh, flow and worrying that once the patient gets used to a different uh, going to a different hospital it's un unlikely that he will want to revert back to making a trip to chennai so this will help uh, second tier centers and hospitals which usually don't get patient uh, inflow from the localities them uh, for them it will be they will make the entire community self sufficient so that deals a major blow to hospitals which attract patients from across the country apollo for for one because the majority there are usually we get a lot of patients from bengal at apollo uh, bengal bangladesh you now west indian uh, sorry east indian patients are concentrated there so this way uh, even institutions such as uh, ramachandra have not been functioning uh, on a full scale so their uh, problem being safeguarding their consultants uh, and setting up the facilities in such a way that they can facilitate co handling covid patients without affecting the rest of their functioning so over the last two months they have had some time to do that but still the preparedness has not been complete not just uh, at particular institutions but across the board so now we are finding solutions on how to make sure all of this is streamlined but it still remains to be seen how effective this can be done so if we are actually if uh, pitching products to these kind of institutions basically medical colleges uh, apollo's the Caveries, Fortis, Muller, like that. 
then their focus right now is on telemedicine and uh, any thing which can help them reduce the risk of their workforce pp and uh, other uh, sanitizers all thing at uh, they have flooded the market uh, from the point where uh, we didn't have enough or uh, there were shortages now there is a situation where everyone started producing it i think we are in surplus and it is quite easy to get access to these kinds of stuff now which is a good thing in itself so this is mainly for the corporates that their workforce expenditure is supposedly very high and uh, since because of that uh, they are trying to look at ways to streamline and make sure their income is not affected so anything along those lines which helps them uh, continue making sure they get a patient footfall they are uh, highly interested in and probably the next tier or is where uh, i think there's a lot of uh, confusion about what or how to get things set up uh, you know hospitals like vijaya and such so what we are doing currently there is all the uh, outpatient consultations have been reduced in great numbers doctors are not allowed to see more than five patients at a given slot so we are uh, having a tremendous backlog of how to handle patients so if a patient wants to even come to the hospital right now the only option is to go to a casualty center which is the same receiving center for both corona patients and you know suspected corona patients and uh, patients with other complaints so now we are bringing yourself to more risk by even trying to go to the hospital in case it's a different ailment so this is again something we are trying to find a way around but uh, an effective solution has not yet been found for this either and thirdly i think the clinics the unorganized sector this has been the hardest hit because uh, with the lockdown it is very difficult for uh, smaller uh, institutions and such to keep functioning one their uh, workforce uh, is difficult uh, for the workforce to actually make travel and commute to the center and such because no arrangements have been made and uh, more than that the expenses incurred by the ppe is often higher than what uh, these centers would make on a per patient basis this again causes problems in how they will stay afloat because the margins and the this thing is usually very less in those kind of institutions and uh, if we are to force the cost of pp on the patients then it doesn't make for a sustainable uh, model in the long run i think these are all problems which we have identified over the last few months and we are still struggling with how to deal with it so i i just wanted to like i thought we'll throw out a few problems see if anyone here is working on solutions to these kind of problems if at all you know how to take it about or if you have any further doubts on what exactly a certain hospital what protocols are being followed and how it is affecting how it might be affecting your company i'll like i'll try to answer those questions to the best of my knowledge yeah i think uh, ashni i'm i'm done uh, so yes doctor thank you so much so now we have the next speaker i invite mr pranav shrinivas to speak on the topic uh, handling covid as a hardware startup over to you sir uh, uh good evening everyone am i audible yes sir yeah uh, good evening as yeah, as uh, uh doctor rajesh it's really uh, not very an ideal way for all of us to meet uh, considering the current uh, situation and uh, yeah it's, it's I'm, i'm pretty sure all of us have been like uh, figuring out our own ways and how to go about our uh, fields and uh, uh, how to navigate through our company and as such in india uh, surviving as a hardware startup in itself has a lot of challenges which i'm pretty sure uh, most of us encounter so what uh, we do basically at elevate technologies is we are uh, assistive tech slash robotic startup where we are uh, first uh, we are working on solutions for uh, people with disabilities and uh, 
our first uh, product is a text to speech and braille converter for people who are visually impaired which kind of uh, helps them interact with any kind of uh, and any kind of content online so we found that to be a pain point and we are trying to navigate through that so what covid uh, actually as a hardware startup initially you are you are already going to be spending a lot of money on uh, the r and d and the prototyping and stuff so now added to covid with the work from home situation and the inaccessibility for all of us to sit together as a team and uh, uh, put things together in itself you know was another challenge but uh, for us overall uh, i i don't know if it's a very ideal uh, way to put it but as a startup we would still say that uh, we've been able to make the best use of uh, this uh, this unfortunate situation that we are in i mean we we, are, we thought we've kind of maximized all our resources uh with us that what we initially did was uh when the lockdown even like about a week before the lockdown was officially announced uh, we in fact started locking up our offices pretty early so that uh, we knew that this is this is something that that we should we could have predicted so me and my co-founder we decided that uh we need to start moving our stuff home and uh, figure out how we can work from there and so we had a weeks buffer before the whole lockdown was done to make sure all our team members had essential hardware components and uh, we had it was basically a very organizing uh, it was a challenge to get things in order organize everything in the right manner so that's what our uh, target was to get things uh, to the right people and from then uh, what our target was for the month of april and may was to make sure everyone is able to complete their particular individual tasks during that phase and uh, we were also in a phase where we were testing our product with our users so we were getting uh, so february and we started our uh, testing with the uh, minimum viable product and we were you know ready to the timeline was that in april we were supposed to go to market and the uh, unfortunate uh, situation was that uh, we couldn't uh, go to market but what we thought was to make the best use of the situation was we have a good team we had a, a set of uh, engineers who were who were experienced with what they were doing and now it was how to make the best use of it our r and d was pretty much uh, we we matched out with our product we couldn't uh, there was not much that we could add unless we got feedback more feedback from the user we tried to get remote feedback from the user in the month of april and uh, we did try to uh, enhance our product and right now as far as our product is concerned we are in a level where we have set up manufacturing we've got good amount of feedback from our users and we are in fact ready to sell and we also uh, set up a few uh, retail uh, channels for the product as well so whatever we could do sitting at home we we figured out we maximized our potential what we did in turn was considering the covid situation and considering how uh, the market was seeming and how uh, you know the whole uh, there there was a economic uh, stagnation that was already happening and there was something that is predicted even further after covid we decided that this is this should be a point where we should try to become self sufficient and not uh, worry too much uh, not worry too much about uh, relying on another source of income like be it an investment or a grant or whatever may be the situation so we decided that we should focus on becoming self sufficient so first we started off uh, i mean uh, i remember in the last digital cafe talk also uh, one of the speakers had mentioned about how they were uh, talking about uh, uh, personal protective equipment that they were making face shield so we we started doing that so uh, right now i'm basically in chennai so Uh, in and around the south of chennai we supplied about uh, 500 uh, face shields so that's they like we started that was our initial contribution toward uh, covid and then we decided that now let's start exploring what else we can do so from there we decided that considering the team that we already have uh, and we are still going to be uh, paying them and they're going to be part of the team and uh, we decided that we we'll start uh, becoming self sufficient by taking up more outsource projects in a field that is related to ours so we have we have a really good team that has experience with uh, robotics so we decided that let's start building some stuff so we started accumulating clients from uh, we have we start got over the last 3 months we got a few clients in the US and the UK who were ready to invest uh, uh, to build robot prototypes because for them also it was a stagnation period where nothing much was happening so this is the best time to work on r&d so they were also in the mood to, you know uh, give a uh, pump in money to develop a robot for them and 
surprisingly so we were in a good position that by the time the last the current uh, lockdown where things are comparatively uh, more eased out we we reached the position where most of our hardware is ready to manufacture and ready to ship so overall the whole situation we uh, tried to not just stick to what was our core competency which was you know our core product focus was us to take we, we knew that we maxed out and it didn't seem uh, an ideal way to just you know focus on that so we kind of branched out and the platform the robotics platform that we have built right now was we also realized that there is immense application for it if uh, uh, we want to up- put it into hospitals for sanitation which is, which is something that's happening in quite a few places some robots have been deployed in uh, uh, places for sanitization and uh, stuff so we decided okay that's something if we have a common platform that's something that could be used for that and also one more advantage as hardware startup that i thought covid did give us was as such as i mentioned earlier surviving in uh, india as a hardware startup has its own difficulties because simple uh, reason that something that i also learned over the last 3 uh, to 4 months is that the cost of hardware pretty much is the same either in the us or in the india when you want to buy it. but you can the i mean i mean the raw materials that you use to make the product but you can for for sure like sell it at a much higher price any in any other country compared to india because that is how our market is and uh, we believe in you know more uh, volumes and uh, that that's how it works so so what we realized in that way was this whole covid situation has kind of accelerated that in india the acceptance of hardware what i personally felt was the acceptance of hardware has uh, become many fold in india like uh, some examples being uh, the robots that are being uh, casually you know accepted for various purposes like there are there are robots being used in hospitals there are robots being used for monitoring and so as a hardware startup that was a very i, I feel like a positive to take out of in this very dark situation where uh people have started accepting so probably the whole hardware acceptance has gone up by two two years is what i personally felt because maybe before covid if you go to a hospital and you look for what kind of equipment is being used, even though there are so many health tech uh, startups that are working on very innovative products hospitals i felt still preferred you know going with the bigger players like you know orion or siemens and all the bigger players and i i feel that this situation uh, has put more stress on how you know uh, startups can contribute towards this market and uh, i feel hospitals will also start adapting to more hardware startups in india that are working on healthcare uh, products and that that was my understanding from talking to a few uh, hospitals as well like they were ready to deploy uh, solutions that were developed over the last two months immediately and i, I think yeah, overall it was if you look at it in the long haul it is a it, it was a positive for hardware is what i felt and personally for us as a company this situation kind of helped us become more self sufficient and boost up to an extent that you know for the next 6 months we don't have to look outside for an investment or a grant so that's pretty much what we did over the covid phase as a hardware startup and this is what we felt uh, so yeah uh, i thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity yeah. thank you sir thank you so much So now uh, we've got few interesting things which can uh, even involve the other participants uh, to join in the call actively. Introducing quiz for the first time in HTIC's digital cafe. Uh, this activity would be carried out every week, and uh, each correctly answered question will carry a point. Uh, so by the end of fourth week, the person who gets the highest point uh, will be given a gift coupon. Uh, kindly mention your answers A, B, C, or D in the chat box. The person who gives the correct answer first will be given the point. So shooting to you the first question. Light bulb technology in hospitals is used as option A disinfectant and kill bacteria option B a source light to do surgeries option C medicine given to patients before going for surgery and option D technology to provide oxygen to the patient Kindly mention your answers in the chat box Uh, so the right answer has been given by Miss Divya Bharati. It's option A. Moving on to the next question, which of the following is planning to invest in technology startups in India? Option A, Google Alphabet. Option B, Facebook. 
ऑप्शन सी एप्पल एंड ऑप्शन डी इंटेल कॉर्प first answer was given by uh, mr ranga vasu moving on to the third question under problem solving the judgmental or common sense related problems are related are termed as option a critical option b value based option c heuristic and option d analytical so the right answer is by mr ranga vasu it's option c heuristic moving on to the next question what is m health option a mobile healthcare device option b to check health issues related to respiration option c to provide healthy tips at your doorsteps and option d none of the above the right answer was given so the right answer was given by ms mohana preeti moving on to the next question the number of healthcare apps available worldwide option a 2 lakh plus option b 1 lakh plus option c 3 lakh plus and option d 4 lakh plus so yeah the again uh, the answer was given uh, the right answer was given by ms mohan preeti thank you ma'am Uh, so thank you everybody over to the floor now i uh, request anybody to come up with your questions or any suggestions you would like to provide to the floor uh good evening arini can i speak yes sir uh, arini uh, thanks a lot uh, for providing this opportunity actually i'd like to speak to mr pranav srinivasan how do i start up is is pranav there am i audible yes sir you are audible um uh, is pranav kindly requesting you to unmute your call Pranav has Pranav call is on mute. Yes, sir. Or can you yeah, call him directly? Call him over the phone, cell phone, and ask him to. Yes, sir. We'll do it, the, sir. Open up the mic. Uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ah, Pranav, this is basically since you are okay. We are also a startup company. We work on breast cancer, all those things. Okay, later I'll talk. Ah, okay, sir. I saw a good uh, article this morning on pulse oximeter. Yes, sir. By amazing person called Ramya Kannan. She's doing amazing mm -hmm. in this field. Okay. She says, uh, okay. basically from now on, everybody need to have a pulse oximeter at home. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you know what is called the pulse oximeter. To yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. No, not to you. I mean, sorry, not to you. To the entire audience, it basically on a non-invasive method, it uh, calculates the oxygen concentration in blood. If I am going wrong, kindly correct me, please. Anybody? 
so what she says is uh, in that way uh, for covid patients uh, normally we need to have 95% less than 85 so or 80 to 75 it causes a lot of dizziness all those things but covid patients don't realize that the manifestation so okay bottom line is there a way to come up with a pulse oximeter less than 1000 she has mentioned about the value basic value as 1000 and uh, now also she says everybody need to have it at home so can we bring down the price of course i will be speaking to the ceo tomorrow sigar velu hmm is there a possibility so, to bring it down the price so so there are two aspects that come into this so one one thing is that there is of course the possibility to bring down the price but it would be a volume game like we would need to get it in higher volumes than usually what a, a startup or a regular company might be able to get it because at the end of the day pulse oximeter is going to have the sensor so the technology is not something new but it's about uh, the when when we look at hardware the way to bring down the cost is mostly in volume if it's an already existing technology mm. so that way i feel yeah uh, if we are not going to for get in high volumes and we want to uh, uh, get uh, something with lower volumes then the other option would be to use uh, some sensors that are not as reliable as a, a standard product and try to use some kind of uh, uh, ai or ml algorithms which can fine tune the data to give us better outputs so but either way considering the whole development cost and what it is going to take to get it out to the market i don't think unless we have volumes we are going to be able to get it down to 1000 rupees that easy sir thank you thank you pranav uh, if i may add to that i believe we already have uh, clip on pulse oximeters which are available at around 1000 for the on the market it, i think you can just search it, look it up the um, i don't remember the company out of the top of my head i think it's uh Netec, max or something I'm, i i can't remember the name but you can search it up there are portable small ones which you just clip on to your finger those ones which they are uh, actually available at uh, 1000 rupees uh, can i can i talk yeah just sure. Two minutes, just a minute. Adit, it's like this, Adit. Uh, I have the pulse oximeter, cordless, yes. I have the digital, and that information by Bluetooth goes to the doctor. Okay. So you, it, you want to add an extra layer of... Uh, you want to link the device to a telemedical... Doctor. Correct. Thank you. That's all, guys. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Others can have a talk. And then, uh, thank and you, then sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Yeah, hi. This is Arvind. Uh, can I go ahead, Harshini? Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, I have a question for Dr. Adit. Um, uh, doctor, it's uh, very disheartening to hear that probably it's going to take much longer for hospitals to regularize their healthcare. I guess okay. I think the primary reason there is, of course, uh, the availability and the cost of PPEs by which the healthcare uh, providers need to protect themselves. And probably I also see a challenge that there aren't any SOPs as of now that hospitals are asked to follow while either attending to patient, allowing them to in, in the hospital or getting them admitted and so on and so forth. So I think there are a couple of things uh, that could possibly happen. Is there any initiative either at the government level or at the MCI level, that they are formulating an SOP. Because I think uh, COVID is fine, but uh, not having a well-oiled uh, healthcare facilities could be very detrimental in the long run. So I think probably something may need to be done there urgently. And I hope uh, if the right minds in the medical fraternity sit together, I think the SOPs definitely can be built in. And another, uh, probably a suggestion, but that's at a different platform. But all the same, I would like to mention that here is that can somebody pitch in with the government and the PPEs can be subsidized for all the healthcare facilities? Because I know government is trying to give a lot of economic stimulus and things like that. But I think healthcare is another important area. And I know for sure uh, the cost of PPA is a big, big deterrent in that. 
So can government pitch in here and probably subsidize the cost of PPEs uh, when they, they are used in, within the hospital setup? Your comments, please. Uh, so, yes, sir. And I totally agree with your second uh, suggestion that uh, the PPEs need to be subsidized and uh, provided to local channels. The There is a certain amount of... Uh, players in the market who are providing PP at a base cost. But the problem, if I want to break it down to you, the bad uh, bones, uh, let us take a private clinic uh, for a dental consultation. It is uh, usually around 300 to 400 if you don't have any uh, procedures being done. Just a check. Uh, is, but dentists are at the highest, uh, they're one of the highest risk uh, prospects for uh, contracting COVID from patients. For them, if they have to use a full set of PPE, how much ever we subsidize it, it is going to double their expense. A full set of PPE currently ranges anywhere between 3.5 to uh, 2,000 to 3,500. So even if you were to go for the cheapest ones with uh, you know government providing subsidization, it is still going to add at least 600, 700 rupees at the minimum to each patient's cost. So this means basically we have uh, doubled a patient's expense when he's visiting a dentist for a routine checkup. So unless this can be solved or subsidized to such an extent that the patient feels no pinch, regularization of uh, using PPE cannot be done. And if, that, if there's an increased cost, patients will di differ from going to the doctor unless it's an emergency, So, which is basically what we are seeing happen right now. So that is for the second one. And for the first one you mentioned about hospitals needing a SOP, yeah, this is something which everyone is trying to address. The problem is the institutions which are uh, distributing the protocols and the measures to be followed are changing their stance every other week. This is not happening at, uh, say, a level of local body. Even if you go as high up as WHO, the protocol which they are releasing keeps changing day to day. So since until we get a good understanding of what corona is capable of doing and what drugs are going to treat it, uh, ability to set up a comprehensive SOP is going to be difficult. And this is something all institutions are facing the brunt of, actually. Yeah, thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Uh, so be free to ask questions. Any other questions or discussions? Kindly come up. So, okay, since there is a silence for a long time, uh, we've got uh, something new like a situation-based discussion. So yeah, we've come up with a discussion. Uh, we've come up with a situation where, you, uh, where, we, where we would like to know what your uh, suggestion would be. So uh, the situation is, goes like this. So you've appointed a new employee. Uh, he's experienced and super efficient uh, programmer maybe. Uh, you can keep it as a programmer or anything from your uh, company. So he is uh, super efficient and experienced, but the problem with him is he has a bad attitude and uh, maybe he's not a good team player too. Uh, so in this situation, will you fire the employee or would you train him and ensure that he provides value to the team? Anybody would like to come up with a suggestion?
Uh, yeah, I, I, I would like to, uh, but I, I feel like personally, uh, this is a situation that we encountered very uh, recently. So, uh, I think it varies again team to team. Like it depends on what is your constitution of the team and how important is that efficient, is efficient programming still to your team. Because uh, if if it's if you are a good enough leader, I feel, and you want to get a product out, then the goal should be to you know kind of train him and provide him with the right values to function under the team. Because values are something that uh, you know it's not if, if it, getting a good programmer is. Uh, both have like almost similar weightage values and getting a good programmer, but it varies on your team. If you have another person who can replace that person, then I I don't think you should spend too much time on that person. But if not, then probably some of you can spend some time on uh, adding those values to him. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Anybody else who would like to come up with a suggestion? So yeah, we've got many joining us. So uh, anybody would like to give us the suggestion? Mr. Yash? Yeah, hi. Yash, yes, sir. Yeah, this is Arvind. Yeah, I agree with uh, Pranav that probably initially he can be given a training uh, until a specified time, but sometimes attitude and problems are difficult to go. So if beyond a point, if the employee doesn't improve, then I think firing him is the only solution. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this is Mutu. Huh? I just want to ask. What do you think we can do to make the digital cafe more interactive? What would you like to see happening over the weeks to come? Anyone uh, has any suggestions? What would you like to see happening? Yeah, hello, Muthu. This is Arvind yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, not a direct answer, but probably my suggestion is if we could have a poll done among the startups saying that what kind of topics that they would want to be addressed in the digital cafe, probably that could give us some ideas as to what could be more relevant for them. Okay. Anything else anyone else wants to say? Add Yash, Jilma, Revin. Adit, any, anything you feel that we could add to make it more interactive? No, sir. I think uh, what uh, Arvind sir said uh, about uh, probably having a poll uh, with a number of options so that uh, the companies can probably maybe have a bigger say in designing what topics are to be discussed. Probably maybe. Okay. Okay, so we can do that. We also have a couple other events we do week, but those uh, are running quite well. Uh, Tuesday, uh, knowledge Tuesday, where somebody comes and talks about some uh, area of knowledge, and then people ask them questions, which is more a lecture come Q and A. Then we do on Thursdays, ask me anything, which is basically a discussion question with a, a celebrity, a, a not a someone of very high high profile. So we are having a few more to come as time goes on. So. Those are things we are doing. And then on Mondays, we have that um, mentoring for the pre incubators And Fridays, we just, uh, for incubators, we just at the moment joining IC. We are not doing anything on our own at the moment. So, like, so if you guys can give us feedback, what you like to have here, what should be done, then we can always uh, start doing because it appears like the lockdown will just carry on for some more time. So, we are all going to be sitting at home for a bit more. So, I think. 
let's make it like productive as we can but so arvind here again on a lighter tone we are hmm. desperately missing the coffee at stic so if you could that, 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 that coffee will find but anyway okay <laughs> okay that coffee is bad so okay i uh, at least you like the coffee <laughs> Okay. No, no. I think it's it's the having a coffee with somebody more than the coffee actually. Okay, okay. So it's actually the socializing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, just drop us a mail. I mean, I mean, we're just trying to see what we can do to keep the spreads up, so we can, you know, when we get back, we'll all still be the same as we were when we left, or better. That's that's the whole, that's the whole idea. Okay. So I think uh, yeah, please. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, this is Jilma here. Okay, Jilma. Uh, Uh, this was uh, like a very good session so you know, we get to know what all other uh, startups are doing so mm -hmm. i uh, like i have pre incubated currently and uh, mm -hmm. like i haven't met any of the startups there so okay. i would you know really like to uh, you know interact with everyone and understand what they are doing and uh, all that so i think a introduction session also can be uh, done as part of uh, digital cafe okay the good uh, valid point we can maybe do that from the next session so everyone can tell each other who they are i guess yeah yes sir uh, so we can give everybody 30 seconds or something but the only problem is if we have sometimes we get 40 people then if everybody starts talking yes. we have a issue that's only time but we'll yes. see how to do that we'll see yes. how to do that. Yes, okay sir. so that's yes. a good suggestion uh, any other suggestions uh, from anyone else Yash, anything you have to uh, input? I think he's not. He's on mute. Okay, if no one has anything else, I think uh, Arshini, you can wrap up the session. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So thank you all for joining us this eve, and uh, I would also like to thank my colleagues uh, Archana Balan and uh, Sumitra for helping me at the back end. So anybody, if uh, is anybody is interested in uh, volunteering to share your experience, uh, the upcoming uh, dis uh, digital session, kindly contact our team. So thank you everybody. Have a nice weekend.